Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tetacom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the i7-8086K processor, which celebrates the 40th anniversary of one of Intel's most influential and most important chips in the computer industry, the 8086 CPU. Then we'll move over to Intel's Xeon E line of processors, which Intel have just announced 10 specific SKUs, so we'll go through those and what we know about them in just a moment. Then we will talk about the Athlon, the Athlon 200GE and Athlon Pro 200GE, which are uh, based on the Summit Ridge Zen Micro Architecture and indeed have integrated uh, Vega graphics. And then finally, we'll finish the video off with Global Foundries because they have announced that they will not be able to keep up with the demand that AMD have for the 7NM process. But with that said, we're just going to start things off with the i7-8086K CPU. 40 years ago, Intel released the 8086 CPU, without question the most influential and important processor that the company have ever released. It gave birth to the x86 range of processors, and we all know how influential those have been in computing history. So, Intel, understandably, want to celebrate that fact, and we now have the i7-8086K, which will be doing just that. So Intel's i7-8086K appears to be between 70 and 100 US dollars or euros more expensive than the i7-8700K, meaning that in pre-launch listings it's going to be about 500 US dollars to be precise, 486. So what about the specifications? Well, we know two things for certain. One, it has a nominal clock speed of 4 gigahertz but the most impressive figure we have is a maximum turbo frequency of 5 gigahertz that means that it is the first mainstream desktop processor from intel to hit 5 gigahertz out of the box i would like to stress however that's probably only with one or two cores being stressed but even so it's a very impressive figure it does make me wonder what the chip is really capable of if you start to play with voltages have a really good cooler and start to tweak things but what about the rest of the specifications? Is this going to be the, the much-touted 8-core part from Intel? No, probably not. Uh, from what we're hearing, the rumour is that it's going to be a special bin of 14nm. So it's going to essentially be a very, very well-clocked i7-8700K. So the 8086K is certainly not going to be an 8-core 16-thread part. Instead, it will be a 6-core 12-thread part and, of course, will work on the Intel 300 series motherboards. In fact, a couple of months ago, and I believe it was like late April maybe, we saw rumours uh, of this processor uh, to begin with. People weren't sure how much stock to actually put in them, but then we saw some CPU Z screenshots appear. And we did indeed see the various cores there running at 4400 MHz, but it was a engineering sample. And we did indeed see that it had 0 to 5 in the core listing. That, of course, means it's a 6-core processor and has a TDP of 95 watts and will indeed be socket 1151 and, of course, based on Coffee Lake. I am somewhat disappointed from the perspective of I would really have loved this to have been an 8-core processor. I think that would have been amazing if Intel had somehow managed to debut the 8-core 16-thread CPUs on the 8086K. But alas, it isn't to be. And I am glad that the first 5 gigahertz CPU we have is at least this. It seems somewhat fitting that we have this this figure, this 5 gigahertz figure that we've been wanting to attain for so long and the anniversary of the 8086 is indeed when we're going to see it achieved. Intel have named 10 socket 1151 Xeon E SKUs in a recent podcast. Now this is very interesting because these processors are of course based on the Coffee Lake architecture. Without question, Intel's lineup of processors is the most impressive on the market. And now we have 10 new LGA 1151s, which Intel have actually announced during a broadcast. Specifications are rather thin on the ground, but from the rumours, they're very close in specifications to the Core i-series. 
Therefore, the smallest CPU would be four cores and only four, and only four threads. The larger models will be six cores and then six cores, 12 threads with higher clock speeds. Although you will notice that some of these particular chips do have a G at the end. For example, we see the uh, Xeon E2124 and we also see the Xeon E2124G. I can only imagine that G would stand for graphics, so they would have some onboard graphics processor, and we don't know what specifications it would have. But as for the actual clock speeds, for example, the Xeon E2176G is supposedly very similar to the Core i7-8700K, with its 6 cores, 12 threads running between 3.7 and 4.7 GHz. The AMD Athlon lineup of processors back in the late 90s and early 2000s was a monumental shift in the market. It allowed AMD to finally compete with Intel for the high end, and the Athlons were incredible back in the day. The original Athlons, for example, the T-Bird and whatever, all the way up to the Athlon 64s were just incredible value for money. And now the Athlon is no longer that. Much like the Pentium, it's been relegated to the lower performance echelons of the CPU lineup hierarchy for both companies. Enter the Athlon 200GE from AMD. So there are two Athlon 200GEs. The first is the Athlon 200GE, and the second is the Athlon Pro 200GE. There are two sources of information. The first is the Asus Crosshair 7 Hero uh, processor supported list. And this was first grabbed by the website Anantech. And we see that yes, the CPUs are indeed listed. And this is backed up with yet another source, which is user benchmark userbenchmark.com, excuse me. And we see that the Athlon Pro 200 GE is indeed running with the Radeon Vega graphics. So these are 35 watt parts, and we see that they are two cores, four threads, with a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz. We cannot find a turbo frequency. So one of two things here. One, it's possible that we don't actually see these chips turbo at all, and they just maintain their base clock, or it's currently not being listed correctly, and we do not also have any information concerning the graphics either. Also, according to this listing, it appears that it's based on Raven Ridge, meaning that it would be built on 14nm. Another website, computerbase.de, however, believes that we will indeed be seeing these particular processors with the Vega 3 GPU. I suspect we're probably going to get more information at Computex. It is a bit of a shame that Athlon no longer represents the pinnacle ridge. Haha, -ha, see what I did there? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. It is a bit of a shame that Athlon no longer represents the pinnacle of what the company can achieve. Much like Pentium. For some reason, I just really loved the name Pentium. It just, it just screamed performance back in the day. And, you know, Pentium inside and AMD Athlon. There was just something so awesome about seeing the Athlon splash screen. I believe it was like Far Cry was the Athlon... 64 splash screen it just looked amazing it was just like oh my god i really want an athlon 64 when i saw that at the time just for your fyi i actually had an athlon xp processor and my god i love that damn thing it was the barton core i managed to overclock it and then i subsequently upgraded to the venice line of cpu which i believe run ran at 1.8 gigahertz base clock I upgraded uh, sorry, up clocked it to like 2.7 it was incredible so yeah, there is definitely something I do miss about that particular brand. It just, for me anyway, it's very, I, I suppose it, it's just rose-tinted glasses and I just have very fond memories of it, but still. And last piece of AMD news, and it comes to us through Global Foundries. It's without question that the Zen lineup of processors has been a resounding success for AMD. And it's also unquestionable that AMD have been incredibly aggressive when it comes to their processor roadmap. Of course, last year we saw the introduction of the Zen microarchitecture, then we saw the subsequent release, the current release of Zen, known as Zen Plus, built on 12nm, and next year we will see 7nm give birth to Zen 
free. Now, the Zen Free, we've heard a lot of rumors about that, some we've covered, including the fact it could have up to 12 to 16 cores. But what is rather interesting is global foundries have gone on record and told us that they will not be able to actually keep up with the demand that AMD themselves have for 7NM. AMD's roadmap is certainly very ambitious indeed. Of course, Zen Plus is built on 12NM, Zen 2 is aiming for 7NM, which is what Global Foundries are discussing here, and Zen 3 will be built on 7NM Plus. However, in a very interesting discussion captured by EE Times, the chief technology chap over at Global Foundries, his name is Gary Patton, did specifically state that AMD will have more demand than what we have capacity for when it comes to the production of 7NM. And so, according to the report, because Global Foundry's 7NM pitches and SRAM cells, in other words, their core technology, are very similar to that of TSMC, will allow AMD to design its new uh, Ryzen CPUs using both Foundries. So why should you care about this? Well, if this report comes to pass, it will be very curious on if there will be a clock speed difference or a situation where you want to go for a specific batch number of processors because it has been produced by let's say global foundries or has been produced by tsmc therefore for example it might have a better maximum overclock potential or perhaps will require less power to get to a specific clock speed or whatever it's also possible that let's say tsmc turns out to be the better um manufacturer maybe amd will use those for the 3700x's or something like that and global foundries will instead produce different chips but given what we know about the zen micro architecture and the fact that it is of course built on ccx that's probably unlikely of course we are hearing if you believe it or not that the next generation Zens will indeed have an increased core count which could mean that we see mainstream cpus on the 12 or 16 core count train which would be absolutely nuts and we do know that amd are being incredibly aggressive another thing that global foundries have said recently is that amd will be using free nm for zen 5 they will instead not even consider using 5 nm and one of the reasons behind this as well is that global foundries themselves don't really have much faith in 5NM. Therefore, they believe that in terms of performance and effort ratios, it's probably just better to just skip from 7 down to 3NM. Uh, I feel that AMD not actually feeling that they can get enough supply from uh, global foundries and they also need to go to TSMC is a very good sign. It obviously shows the actual sales figures that AMD have and their and their opinion and their level of um, confidence in their product for the next several years. It shows that of course that they feel not only we as regular consumers, whether that's gamers or enthusiasts are buying their chips, but also of course, they're going to make their way into a lot of servers, which is, for AMD at least, absolutely critical. I can only hope that AMD have similar plans for the GPU side of things. Of course, we've heard a lot about Navi and subsequent GPUs, and I can only hope that AMD's uh, GPU portfolio becomes as competitive, because if so, that's going to be absolutely awesome for Team Red, and of course for us as well as consumers, which is honestly the most important thing from my point of view. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal thing, like, share, comment and subscribe and feel free to click the bell icon because sometimes I hear it does stuff, you know, just occasionally, <laughs> it's often. But with all of that said, have a great day and take care of yourselves. Bye for now.